Welkom bij de podcast van SURF, de ICT-samenwerkingsorganisatie van en voor onderwijs en onderzoek in Nederland. In deze podcast praten we over de ervaringen en mogelijkheden die EduBadges bieden. Deze podcast is in het Engels. Veel plezier met luisteren en laat ons weten wat je ervan vindt. Hallo en welkom bij deze podcast. We zijn hier op de SURF Education Days. En ik ontmoet twee internationale gasten vandaag with which I'm going to talk about open badges and the possibilities these bring uh, in, when using an education. Let me introduce my guests. I've got Rick West here with me. He's an associate professor at Brigham Young University in the United States. Yes. On my other side, uh, we've got Evelyn Haast. She's from uh, Arteveld Hogeschool in uh, Flanders in Belgium. And she's uh, responsible for educational innovation in the bachelor program of nursing. Rick, perhaps you would like to start us off by explaining what open badges are to you and why you think they could have an important role in higher education. Well, great question. You know, it's interesting because the U.S. Department of Education said recently that they thought digital badging was going to be the biggest revolution in education. And I thought that was an interesting thing to say. So I think there's many things that are different about uh, open badges. Uh, for one, they are digital. And because they are digital, you can put all the data into them about what students know, what they've accomplished, who looked at it, who gave them the credit. All that data that currently doesn't exist in their credential is in a digital credential. And then the, also the benefit of them being open is there's a little bit of magic open technology that allows these credentials to transfer from one institution to another. So students could be in Evelyn's university and earn a credential, transfer to my institution, and those credentials would travel with the student, which is something very different than what we've got currently. And it allows us to break down some of the barriers we have in education. Right, thank you very much. Breaking down barriers, I think, Evelyn, this is a key word at the way, the way you implement badges as well. Could you explain to us how at Arteveld Hogeschool you are using open badges and why you are doing this the way you do? Uh, yes, um, personally, I got acquainted with badges the first time through another project uh, in our uh, university college. It's called Gentle Student and um, in fact it allows uh, students to use this platform uh, to uh, find organi organizations that um, have projects that they can enroll in, that they can volunteer in. Um, and when they successfully uh, do this, they get a badge from that organization. Uh, so that's how I learned uh, of the concept of the open badges. I found this very interesting for formal learning as well. So in our uh, Bachelor of Science of, in Nursing, um, students have to reach uh, eight learning outcomes uh, to get the diploma. Um, but it's not always easy for them to know through which course am I working towards which learning goal. And we wanted to visualize this. And uh, we thought it was a good idea to use uh, badges in combination with learning pathways towards these uh, eight goals uh, to visualize for them which courses have I already succeeded in, which mm -hmm. competences have I uh, reached already, mm -hmm. um, so they know where am I standing in my curriculum at this moment, where are my talents, what are subjects that maybe I should work a little bit harder on, so it gives them more insight um, on their uh, pathway in the curriculum individually. Right, so you re you're really using it as a visualization also for the student to see yes. where he or she is at in the pathway towards the bachelor diploma. Yes, that's right. correct. And yes. we hope in this way they, they will be um, like able to reflect more uh, on their way to the competence and not just look at the grades they get. Because sometimes they're really fixated on um, the grades themselves and it's a piece of paper but we really want them to think more about in which level they're uh, working towards certain learning outcomes. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really interesting how you explain that for looking coming from the informal use you were looking at how can we use it in formal education. Yes. Perhaps ju ju just to explain in the Netherlands SURF is developing a uh, an infrastructure in which higher education institutions and vet institutions uh, are able to um, hand out badges, to generate badges. And uh, those badges could be in both contexts. So they could be in formal education and they could be in informal uh, or, or non-accredited uh, ed education. So it's really up to the institution to use that. And now in the pilots we are running at this moment with uh, 17 institutions, we see we see that, that both of these could be really interesting mm -hmm. uh, yeah, ways to use badges. But of course, most of the pilots are still in the, in the, in the informal uh, 
part. But it's really interesting to talk to, to institutions, how they think badges could, could help them. Perhaps, Rick, you could reflect on this, on the formal versus non-formal character of education that could be, that we could use badges for. What would be your opinion? Well, that's, that's what I think is exciting about open badges, is I think they can break down some of the barriers that exist a little bit artificially in education. Um, we have barriers within formal education. Um, you know, you have to complete all your education on the semester, on the term. You have to complete them within a class, with the same teacher, in the same department. And sometimes um, those limit the kinds of educational experiences that students can have. And I think one of the benefits of Open Badges is it breaks down some of these barriers into smaller pieces, and then you can rearrange those pieces in unique ways for different students. Um, and it can also break down these barriers between, you were mentioning the uh, non-formal and the informal learning yes. in our field, um, that kind of thing too, that um, students are learning all over the place, both formally and informally, and if we could create credentials that float between these experiences, then we can find ways to capture all the learning that students have and keep them all in one place, which will make it a lot easier for them to explain what they've learned. Now that you mentioned uh, mentioning floating between experiences, uh, at SURF we also believe that floating between institutions or between different educational contexts could be something that we can help by, by using uh, badges. So that's the reason why we are trying to um, to get a national approach, uh, to get everyone on the same page to, to do it together in the Netherlands as a whole and ultimately of course also internationally the discussion is, uh, is taking place. Yeah. I would be curious to hear from you perhaps Evelyn first, um, so you are using the badges in this way now in your uh, Hochschule, in your institution, yes. how, how do you look at, at a national or perhaps even international approach? Do you think it would help you to cooperate with other institutions? I think there's really an open field there and there, there's a lot of possibilities to um, work together more, not only with uh, institutions of higher education, but also with organizations and the professional field. Um, uh, in Belgium at the moment, we don't have uh, the national platform that you are working on in the Netherlands. And that's what I think is very interesting, um, that we can cooperate more. What we do have in Belgium is that our domain-specific learning outcomes for each diploma are the same. So there is an opportunity there to work together a bit more. Um, so you have a framework we have of learning framework. outcomes that you yes. could use to plot badges on yes. and then make, make flexibility possible. Yes, it would be lovely okay. if, if we could do this more uh, okay. and work more together. So do you think a subject-specific approach could help that you would call other nursing education uh, providers together and see if you could set up a system together? Yeah, I, I think it would be interesting to connect to other institutions and uh, at least talk about the possibilities that are there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's sometimes I I, I, um, I see the barriers because uh, each institu institution wants the student at the moment to have the diploma of his or her mm. institution in a way. Um, but. I think even internationally it would be very interesting if students could follow courses elsewhere and bring this into their own um, portfolio, sort of speak, so that it's not just the institution that decides on the way to go or the way forward for the student, um, but that a student can have its own, his or her own pick of, I want to add this to my own portfolio. Yeah. Now for nursing we are a regulated uh, profession so some things have to be acquired to be able to do this profession so I also believe in guidelines for mm. the students as well to make the right choices. Yes definitely. Yes. Well this flexibility issue is uh, being discussed in the Netherlands very intensely at the mm -hmm. moment where we have the acceleration agenda with eight topics that we're working on yes. and flexible education and how to provide it is one of the the, bit, the, the topics in which a lot of institutions are cooperating. And then this question is, of course, uh, very, very relevant. Mm -hmm. Rick, perhaps you could talk with us about your insight on technology and the role that technology could play. Um, this is, in, is, in essence, an educational question. Well, mm -hmm. you are a teacher yourself, so you are working with students. But technology is perhaps part of a solution also to the problems that Evelyn is mentioning. Could you have an Absolutely. Share I, believe, your opinion? I believe technology is critical to being able to make open badges successful. Um, one of the big problems with open badges, the reason why teachers and students maybe 
don't want to do open badging is usually a technology problem where they say, oh, this was too difficult to use. I don't want to have to learn how to do new, something new. I don't want to have to do something twice. And so as we can develop technologies that issue these credentials, but also integrate into our current technology solutions. So they integrate into our learning management systems. They integrate into our student record systems. When this becomes seamless, then I think this will really take off as an idea. Um, people like the idea, but they're worried about having to expend extra energy if the technology isn't working quite right. Yes, definitely. Uh, I believe that's definitely a big, a big reason. So at SURF, that's exactly why we are trying to, to, uh, to install an infrastructure on a national level that will blend in well with the ICT systems that are already there, right. using SURF Connects to log in and trying to take that barrier out of the way. So, uh, uh, at, yeah, also t talking about GDPR, privacy, yeah. um, uh, the regulations that, that we are all dealing with uh, that, that can play an important role when you put down an infrastructure like this. Yeah. It's actually one of my bigger lessons learned so far in the project that you have to find a balance between um, technical user friendliness for, for the user, for the student, for the institution on the one hand, and on the other hand, needing to comply with GDPR regulations, with, uh, with privacy regulations, where, where you need to find just the right pitch, just the right way of combining the two to have a functioning system that's still uh, compliant with everything. Yeah. So Rick, um, uh, you've been in the Netherlands for six months, looking at the way that SURF is uh, trying to put out to uh, work on a national uh, level and, and introducing open badges. Could you give us your opinion on the importance of uh, of organizing everyone in one national approach. How was the work? How does this work in the United States? Well, in the United States, there was some interest at one time at the U.S. Department of Education level that they wanted a national system for badging. Um, the uh, in motivations changed a little bit after the after the elections, as they often do. And so, what we have in the United States right now is more initiatives at the state level. So, for example, in my state of Utah, there is a state level initiative to create an open badging system for teacher professional development. And that will be a way for all teachers in the state of Utah to get professional development credit um, with open badging. So that's a very big project. And we see that kind of happening in different states, that each state is taking their own approach to how to do it, um, as well as different universities looking at how open badging will fit their university system. So right now in the United States, we aren't seeing a national movement as much as these localized kind of state and university-led initiatives. Mm -hmm. Having looked at the EduBadges project in the Netherlands and having spoken to a number of our pilot institutions, is there something you would like to, um, some, some advice you would like to give us? To the SURF project? Yes, in the Netherlands. I think similar to what I uh, mentioned before about um, the challenges that many teachers and students face, I think the technology of EduBadges is very good and very sound. I think the challenge in the Netherlands might be one of publicity, and of communication mm -hmm. and helping students understand why should they value these open badges? What value will this play mm -hmm. for them in their lives? And also communicating to employers who have told me that they want a better way to understand the skills that students have. And open badges can be a way to communicate that, but they don't know that. And so there's also mm -hmm. a communication that we need to have with the, with the employers to help them understand that they should be looking for these open badges. And then communicating to students that these badges will be valuable for them and then communicating to teachers about what value this plays for them too, that this can help them teach and personalize their education in the classroom. And so I think it's more, uh, the, the advice I would give is, is it's more of a publicity issue right now, I think will help. Okay, I see. Yeah, the, the employers, the labor market is the one big place where yeah. you can use badges uh, from uh, looking from the end user. The other place we see is when you transition within the educational system from one institution to the other and you want to show what you already have got in your personal backpack uh, yeah. of, of skills and knowledge. Um, how would you look at this balance, uh, Evelyn? Do you think your students are most uh, interested in badges as a um, on their way to the labor market or is it really mainly a tool within your educational program to reach the bachelor? How do you look at that? Well, I think at the moment, as this is um, the first time you're going to do this, that um, the emphasis will like be on the visualization through their uh, learning path towards the diploma. But I hope we can come to some sort of um, 
I don't know, uh, a shared uh, language, a common understanding, not only with the students, but also the professional field. So yes. badges get more value than only in the nursing program itself. So they can really take them with them. So they have an added value. Um, outside of the context of the educational of the, program. Yes, yes. And that they com can combine them with um, other skills and competencies that they've gained throughout their life, so to speak, because also they will have to keep on learning. And I think badges is also interesting, um, an interesting system to uh, engage students in lifelong learning. Um, and also for the professional field, I think this can be a way to talk with them about these badges, that it can be interesting mm -hmm. uh, for people already working there to earn badges as well, because yeah, yeah things change, uh, there's an evolution and, and topics and yeah. Yes, and you, I think you were explaining to me before also that in the nursing profession in, in your country that people have to earn a certain amount of uh, profes professionalization points in each year that they work in the profession. Um, and yes. Perhaps we could use badges for that as well. Well, the idea is that um, everyone in the professional field has uh, a portfolio in healthcare and they will have to show that they are engaging in lifelong learning. Okay. And I think um, with the open badges, if we can like use this digital system um, from what they've gathered in the past and that they can look at what do I still need um, in the future to become a better uh, professional and maybe a better person that I want to be, um, that this can be a good system for this. So it could actually be a bridge between your initial yes. education at uh, the higher education yes, institution and the, your working life afterwards as a professional. Yes, because it doesn't stop when you get a diploma. Oh. And I think that's uh, one of the insight that's very interesting about the open badges is that you can keep earning them, so to speak, granularly. It, it doesn't have to be a whole program, um, so you can just You can just take a couple of modules uh, yes. and, and certify those with a badge, yes. so without having to, to put everyone through the uh, complete diploma uh, program. Yes. Is that what you mean? Oh, interesting. Definitely. Which I think is important because Traditionally in education, we've kind of assumed that students are all the same, that they want the complete four-year degree, they want to do it in four years, um, that they want to do it when they're 18 and 20 years old. And I think what we're realizing now is because of lifelong learning, people may need to come back and only want to do six months or a year mm -hmm. or two months. It, it may depend on what they need for their current job. Yes. And they may be 20 years old, they may be 55 years old. And so I think we need new flexibility for being able to allow people to learn when they need to learn and how much they want to learn at that moment and create credentials that are more flexible that way so that it doesn't have to be an entire program. Mm -hmm. It can be smaller and more modular. Yes. So Rick, you've worked with Open Badges for five or six years, yeah. I think, by now. Yeah. If you would have to pinpoint one big lesson learned for you so far that you think this was really an eye-opener for me, what would you like to point out to us? Well, I think what was interesting for me is that my background is not necessarily in credentials, right? Or even assessment necessarily. I'm an instructional designer, that's what I do. Great. I yeah. design instruction. And um, I got into open badging in order to design a better course for my students. And so I did it from a problem solving approach. But the thing I realized is credentials may seem boring, they may seem less innovative, less interesting. But I find that as we change the credential, we change the way people teach and the way people learn because they're teaching for that credential and students are learning so that they can get that credential. So if we change that kind of goal at the end, then we change the process. And I found that in myself that when I started doing open badging, it changed the way I taught. And so it wasn't just that my students got a, a fun little digital certificate at the end. It was that they got better instruction from me and they got more personalized instruction, that the course was more fitted to their needs. And I've talked to other teachers and they've said similar things, that open badging was a catalyst of sorts to rethink their whole approach to teaching and learning. And as an instructional designer, that's what's exciting to me, is when open badging is the spark that changes the way people think about teaching. Is that the feedback you got from your students as well? Yes, and um, yes, many of them. Uh, when I would tell them about open badging, I usually would get um, two reactions. One reaction would be, hmm, well, uh, will employers care about this? And I'd be like, well, you know, if you tell them, then they will. Because that's one thing we found. We did some research on that, that 
employers, once you tell them what open badges are, then they care about them, but sometimes they don't know. Um, the other thing that students would often tell me is they would say, this is such a cool idea, why isn't everyone doing it? And I would say, well, because it's not yet you know, implemented everywhere yet, it's not, uh, people don't know about it yet. But students were excited about it. They, they at first don't know what it is, but once you teach them about it, I find that they're usually pretty excited about the idea. <laughs> really interesting to know, yeah. We talked to a couple of student representatives in, the, in, the, in our pilot project in the Netherlands as well. And we found similar, uh, similar answers like the ones you were giving. Another thing that we heard here more often um, from student side is that some of them are worried it could in increase stress to them. So that badges could become an extra thing they have to do on top of all the other things they have to do. So several students have warned us about this, that this could be a feeling uh, that, that badges could generate. So we were a bit surprised actually at the, at yeah. the beginning to, to hear this, but as it, it keeps uh, coming back, uh, we think this, this, ca this is a, a point uh, that students in the Netherlands would be worrying about. So we'll need to really look at the added value that the badges could give those students and, and how to make clear what they have to gain by, by, by a system of uh, open badges. And I think then we're back in the examples that the two of you have given us also by looking at more uh, flexibility in education and giving students more power on shaping their own educational pathway. Go ahead, Evelyn. Yeah, Evelyn. I was thinking that's also why the common understanding is so important. Um, how can we agree on which value we give to a badge and when do you give a badge to a student? And it's something I think we need to talk about more um, because you can have like really, really tiny micro credentials, but you can have different micro-credentials that form a bigger whole and also you can gain a, a bigger badge, sort of speak, or another level of badge. So how, I don't know. Um, I think you're saying we yeah. need policy now. Yes, we yes, need policy. I agree and completely. One of my concerns also is like we have the open standard. Yes. And I noticed that in the surf uh, you have some really interesting extensions uh, for higher ed, like with um, the credits yeah, or right. uh, the European um, the framework, quality, quality framework, quality framework um, which we don't have in the open standard. But is it still the open standard, of do, or do we need a new standard for higher education? And that's very interesting mm. as yes, well to exactly. talk about. So the way we're looking at this from SURF is we're using the Open Badge 2.0 uh, standard, yes. but we are thinking about adding extensions let's call them European extensions. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the Open Batch Standard is from the United States, from, a si from the context of the educational system of the United States. And we think that within the Bologna area, the higher education area of Europe, uh, we, have, we have certain frameworks already in place yes. that we can use for giving added value to badges and for making them stackable and transportable across the borders of the European higher education area, like the European Qualifications Framework, like ECTS uh, points. Also questions like language would be interesting metadata to include yes. in a badge in this, in our European context, where they probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't be, this would just be English <laughs> in right. all cases right. in, the, in the American system. Yeah. So at SURF we've started from the technology push, from, from putting down an infrastructure that uh, educational institutions can use to generate badges, to issue badges. Um, but you can only go so far in technology. So I think we're reaching a point now where, uh, where the technology is there, it's no longer the problem, but we need to agree with each other, with all the stakeholders in the educational system of, on the why <laughs> and how we are going to implement this to, in order to take the next steps. So we're trying to give this shape in the Netherlands now from the acceleration agenda. We, ha we are currently starting a big uh, inventory and analysis, uh, talking to a lot of stakeholders in the next six months of how they look at micro-credentialing and then badges in the, in the Dutch uh, educational system. And then hopefully coming up with a couple of policy questions at the end that we're going to discuss with our umbrella organizations and the ministry. Uh, hopefully leading us to um, yeah, to to uh, to answers that that we need to do, that we need to agree on in order to go further on a system level, on a national level. So I'm really looking forward to to what we what yes, we can reach. That's uh, very interesting. Uh, also very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where it where yes, it takes us. Yes. 
we're at the end of our interview. Um, last remarks, uh, Rick, you're going back uh, to the airport in a couple of days, <laughs> going back home to the US, but you've spent a lot of time in the Netherlands. What would be your, your final insights you would like to share with, with the Dutch listeners? Final insights. I don't know if this is specific to the Dutch. It's more about the badges in general. Um, I've been watching the evolution of the badging movement over the last five years. I, and I don't know that badging will be the end solution. But I think what we're going to find is something more along the lines of what they call a comprehensive learner record. That will, uh, a digital record, a digital storehouse that will include all the credentials that you've earned. And I think that will be badges. I think it'll include badges. I think it'll include traditional degrees, which I don't think are going to go away. I think it'll include um, other types of verifiable credentials, uh, performance assessments. And I think that's the, the place we're going to go to is a way where students can manage all the credentials and keep them all in one place and make them easy to access and to share with employers. And I'm excited for some of the new technologies that will be coming out, I think, in the next five years that will make that a little bit easier. Evelyn, final statement from your side. How do you see the future? Um, actually, what you said, I think that it will become more student-led, that they will have to take the initiative um, when they have all their credentials that they've gathered, like, which ones do I want to um, highlight the most? Uh, which are the ones that describe me as a person, as who I am, as who I mm -hmm. want to be in the professional field. Um, and so in this way they can like show themselves to the world the way they want to show themselves. They'll need to own their digital yes. persona more yes. than they've done in the past. In the yes. past we've said do all these things and we'll give you a certificate at mm -hmm. the end. I think in the future it's going to be more tell us who you want to be and we'll help you find credentials that help you develop. But, but people are going to have to own that as, mm -hmm. as learners. Putting students at the center of mm -hmm. the educational experience. Yeah. Yes. Where they and, should be. And I think we will become more and more the coach of the student mm -hmm. and not the teacher. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me here today. I've enjoyed our talk tremendously. I am, wish you a good trip back, uh, back home. And uh, thank you also to all the listeners for joining us uh, today. Dank voor het luisteren naar de podcast van SURF. Wil je meer weten over dit onderwerp en andere ICT-vernieuwingen en digitale ambities binnen onderwijs en onderzoek? Kijk op surf.nl.